Hello friends and welcome back! In today's video we are going to be covering a topic I have seen asked a lot. What is the best planet route to take in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2? And the short answer is, there isn't one! It's a dealer's choice scenario. End video! <laughs> just messing with you. However, there is some truth in what I just said. The best planet route will depend on what you're looking for most. For example, are you looking to get your lightsaber as quickly as possible, or get as many lightsabers as quickly as possible, or are you interested in lightsaber upgrade parts or crystals? Do you want to unlock all companions first, or is your first goal to convert all companions into fellow Jedi? Determining what you want to do in the playthrough first will be the biggest factor in which planet route you should consider. So lucky for you guys, I will break down what the planets have to offer and why we might consider going that way first. I'll be sure to share multiple routes, hopefully one perfect for your playstyle, and cover what I personally like to do. So let's dive into it. We won't be covering the non-optional planets like Paragus, Telos, or Malachor 5, as those are at the beginning and end of the game and they're predetermined on when they'll show up. So that leaves us with the remaining planets. We have Narshada, aka Smuggler's Moon, Dantooine, Korriban, M478 if you have the restored content mod, Onderon and Dexon, which I believe is also a moon. Korriban and M478 we will group together as they are both part of the same mission to locate Master Vash, and we cannot get to M478 until we complete the Sith Tomb on Korriban. Same goes for Onderon and Dexon. We are forced to land on Dexon and befriend the locals before we can get to Onderon. So let's break down what each planet has to offer to help determine where we should start. Narshada! This planet has a lot to offer and is one of the longer planets to complete time and quest wise. There are two places to acquire main lightsaber parts or full lightsabers if you've already crafted yours. It is possible to get two full lightsabers here if you get the part from Visa. Check it out in the corner if you want to see how to do that one. One in Voga's secret stash and the other from Lutra in the docks. We will acquire two companions here, either Mira or Hanhar, Mira for lightsiders, and Hanhar for Darksiders, and Goto after completing the main quest for Narshada. We also will have the opportunity to acquire the rest of the missing pieces here to fully reassemble HK-47. A merchant here will sell one part, and we will run into three or four groups of HK-50 assassin droids for the other pieces, so we can get a total of three companions from Narshada. Also, on the subject of companions, converting Atten and Mira to Jedi does have to happen here on Narshada. There are some scenes that you'll have to trigger around the moon. Check the corner for some more depth and coverage on converting them. Up next is Dantooine. Can't go wrong with this planet. Lots of goodies and upgradables. We can get three lightsabers or main pieces here. One from altering the dead salvager's will. One from Brook after we help or defeat him. And then if you have the restored content, we will come across a Padawan who also gives us a lightsaber. Jeron may provide you with another piece as well if you're missing one. There are some merchants by the Jedi Enclave that sell a hefty amount of lightsaber upgrades and crystals. The Crystal Cave is also located here on Dantooine. You will get the main character crystal and quite a few other crystals here for free. If you went with the female main character, we will also find a companion in the Jedi Enclave. Mikhail, or referred to as Disciple. We can also convert him into a Jedi before we leave the room that we found him in. Now Korriban. Two lightsaber spawns here. One where we find Vash's corpse, or her hollow pad if you have the restored content, and another when facing the visions and flashbacks in the Shirat cave. There is a ton of lore and story to be found on this planet. Kray will brief you on tombs, good demolition skill will get you to the Sith holocron in the temple, and there's lots of backstory and even an appearance of Revan in the Shirat cave. Tons of XP too. If you have the restored content, we will have to find Vash's data pad to get the location of M478. M478 is awesome. Modders found lost content in the game's files and recreated missing pieces that Obsidian left out. It's an amazing feat on its own and definitely worth checking out. You'll uncover some great missing story as well as get to face Master Vash instead of just looting her dead body. You'll get a lightsaber here and there should be a decent lightsaber upgrade near the end of the M478 main quest. I got lucky and found a hurricane crystal here. Lastly, there is a badass upgrade here that we can acquire for HK-47. Feet for targeting level 1, 2, and 3. Very helpful for the droid manufacturing level with HK-47. 
One group left, Onderon and Duxon. So we will be forced to visit Duxon first. We will get Mandalore, leader of the Mandalorians, as one of our companions. With Mandalore, you can reunite all the Mandalorians you find hanging around the other planets. You don't get anything special, but you do have a brief conversation with Mandalore regarding Revan, and that is cool if you're into the story. Two lightsaber spawns on the first part of Duxon, one from a Kanok when you are meeting up with Kelborn, and the other one from Mandalore after you help out the camp. We will go to Onderon and come back to Duxon again. During the second visit to Duxon, your companions will storm a Sith temple and we can snag a few more lightsabers here. Enemies wielding lightsabers may have some to loot off their body, and we will get one after completing the Sith temple. Onderon will have a few goodies that we can take as well. For Darksiders, we will find the Quixoni Crystal in the Cantina that we can trade a Starport Visa for. And after helping to clear the name of Dagon Gant, we will be awarded a lightsaber. We will have to leave and come back to trigger the Civil War. While we're back on Onderon, we will face quite a few lightsaber wielding Sith, and some will drop lightsabers as loot. We can also find some lightsaber upgrades in the Museum of Onderon. So that's pretty much what the planets have to offer. I of course left out a bunch, but these would be the main reasons why you would want to go to these planets. Unless I need something from Onderon or Duxon, I will always save this planet for last, and here's why. First off is the huge civil war where you fight many Sith. It just feels right to have a lightsaber and upgraded force powers when going through this. Fibroblades just wouldn't be as satisfying. Another reason is the team split. So when you come back to Duxon, you'll have to split up your party. Three peeps you'll send to Onderon, and then three others you'll send to Storm the Temple. Doing this planet last ensures that I have all companions converted to Jedi, the ones that I could, and I should have enough sabers for everyone to wield one, maybe even two. That way, when I send a party that doesn't have the main character in it, I can still make sure to include three Jedi for Force Seal and Revitalize. Unless you're trying to unlock all planets or get the Quixoni Crystal, Onderon and Duxon as the last planet does have its benefits. So let's break down some possible routes for certain playstyles. Do note, I am focusing on which planets to start with, and I am less focused on which planets you should leave for last. So here are some of the routes that I will cover. The lightsaber route, getting your lightsaber as quickly as possible, or getting as many lightsabers as quickly as possible. Lightsaber upgrades. Recruiting all companions. Turning capable companions into Jedi. And unlocking all planets. There are definitely some other routes that I am leaving out, but these ones should cover what you basically want to do when you first start your game. So let's break down the fastest lightsaber route. If you take advantage of gaining a ton of light or dark side points, you should be able to trigger Visa to show up during your first planet. You can get a part from her, or you can go to a planet that has two parts if you couldn't get Visa to trigger. For example, what I used to do was go to Korriban first, since the Sith Temple is relatively short. Do the temple, get your piece, Go back to your ship, defeat Visa, and bam, your lightsaber. But I have found Nar Shada to be the better option since I can still quickly get a lightsaber and then move on to companions or something else that Nar Shada has to offer. So Nar Shada first. Land on Nar Shada, head straight to Lucha, and help him out or strike him down. Striking him down, super quick and easy. Then head to the Cantina to trigger the Voga Stash quest, or back to the Ebon Hawk to fight Visa if you triggered her to show up. Using Visa, it is possible to get two lightsabers here fairly quickly. Any planet with two parts can yield you the lightsaber, but Korriban or Nar Shada will probably be the quickest of the planets for a lightsaber. If you are looking for many lightsabers as quickly as possible, then you may want your first planet to be Onderon or Duxon. As mentioned previously, Onderon and Duxon will have many Sith enemies equipped with lightsabers. We should be able to loot quite a few off of them. However, Onderon and Duxon have two parts to it, so we will have to leave and come back to trigger all the Sith enemies to start appearing. So what you will want to do is hit Onderon and Duxon first. We should be able to acquire three lightsabers before we have to leave, if we got one of our pieces from Visa. The Kanok by Kelborn, one for Mandalore, and one for clearing Dagon Ghent of charges. We are forced to leave and find one of the lost Jedi before being able to come back and finish the planet. I prefer to go to Dantui next, as I can get three sabers here as well, and a bunch of upgrades. After completing Dantui, we should have around six lightsabers, and now we can go back to Onderon Duxon for a few more. We will be looting from the Sith and getting one from Frieda Nod's tomb. It would not be uncommon here to have around ten lightsabers after completing the two planets. Seven from the planets, plus whatever we have looted.
Now for the lightsaber upgrade route. So this one is nice and simple. Start with Dantooine. No doubt, best planet for upgrades and crystals. We can get three lightsabers here, and a whole bunch of goodies from the merchants and Jordan. The merchants outside the Jedi Enclave will have a bunch of upgrade items for our lightsaber. And the crystal cave here will yield us tons of crystals and the beefy main character crystal. Next, I would probably go to Onderon. We can get the Quixone crystal here, and we will find some goodies in the Onderon Museum. Now for recruiting all companions. The first stop for this route is Nar Shada. As mentioned earlier, we can get up to three companions from here. Four if you count Visa triggering on your first planet. Trigger Visa with heavy light side or dark side points. On Nar Shada, you will get Mira or Hanhar depending on what side you will go with. And you will get Goto after completing the main quest for Nar Shada. And then we can get HK-47 after we acquire all four pieces. If you went female main character, head to Dantooine after to find Disciple. Then after that, we will get Mandalore from Duxin, and he is our last companion. You do have to complete Nar Shada to get all the companions from there. But the other two, you don't have to finish the whole planet to unlock your companions. Now we will cover the best route for converting capable companions to Jedi. So you want to gain influence with these companions, too much influence lost will make it super difficult for you to convert them. Check my other video for more depth on getting companion influence. Nar Shada will be our first planet. We can convert three companions here. Beodur, Atten, and Mira. Beodur you can convert anywhere, but Atten and Mira, they will have to happen here on Nar Shada. Next will be Dantooine, so we can convert Disciple if we went with a female main character. If we went with a male main character, we can convert Handmaiden on the Ebon Hawk after sparring three times. Alright, now for the final route, unlocking all planets. So I would suggest Onderon or Duxin, so you can trigger the first half of that planet. And then when you are prompted to leave, head to Korriban. Run through the temple real quick to uncover the location of M478. And that's it! You've unlocked all the planets and moons except for the ending planet Malachor 5. So of course, this subject is debatable, but that should give you a better understanding of which route would be best for you to take. Look at what each planet has to offer and try to figure out what you want to go after first. I myself usually go for getting my lightsaber as fast as possible, and then I go for converting the companions that I have. Conveniently, I can do most of this on Nar Shada as my first planet. My usual route is Nar Shada, Dantooine, Korriban, M478, then Onderon and Duxin. I will change it up occasionally depending on my mood or if I already played, if I did one playthrough that route, maybe the next time I'll mix it up just for some fun. Well that's it folks, hopefully this video was of some help to you, either with providing some good planet routes or at the very least, breaking down the major stuff that the planets have to offer. Toss a like or a comment if this helped you out. Let me know what some of your guys' favorite routes are down below and be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can know when I get some more content out. I appreciate you guys checking out the video, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Oh, shit! <laughs>